Emperor, I think you're muted. We can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, no everyone. My name is Amber. I am the admissions coordinator here at Climb Higher. Um, and I am also a cohort two alum. Um, we are beginning to start our fifth cohort this September. And I'm excited to um, let you guys know all about what we do at Climb Higher and how you can become a part of that. So give me a second to share my screen. Can you guys all hear me just fine? Yes. Okay. So um, at Climb Higher, we train diverse and determined talent um, to break into new careers. Um, we used to say into tech, but we are finding that climbers are getting careers in all sorts of fields. Why did we skip that bar? Sorry guys, all right. So about Climb Higher, Climb Higher is a nonprofit organization founded by social entrepreneur Nitsan Pelman in 2019. Nitsan had um, worked for the Department of Education in New York and also went on to work for LinkedIn. And it was at LinkedIn that Nitsan um, discovered that nine and 10 jobs um, don't make it to be posted in the job market. They're filled by internal revenue. So, I mean, internal referrals. So this proves that it is who you know and what social capital that you have that lands you in the jobs that you are seeking. Our approach to success is to prepare working adults employed in minimum wage gig economy jobs into fulfilling financially stable careers. And we do this um, by having a curriculum that covers over 150 hours of network building, technical training and professional development instruction. So what separates Climb Higher from other accelerated training programs, we consider ourselves a community and not a class. And what this looks like is in each cohort, climbers establish a culture that builds community. And we do that in so many different ways. Um, we start off trying to build as much homophily as we can, figuring out what we have in common, what we don't. We also set a list of agreements based off of the cohort. So in that cohort, you all will have community agreements that you go by. They're not set, they're not set each cohort at the same standard. It's based off of um, the climbers in that cohort. And that culture is also established through the way that you guys communicate and connect with each other. Um, we understand the importance of building relationships and professional connections so climbers are provided opportunities to network with professionals in the industry. And they do this in two different ways. Um, one is a volunteer event where that professional is there to help you and volunteer um, their expertise or their experience um, for you, for your professional development. And then another half of those, another half of those events are um, social capital cocktail hours where it's literally just a casual meet and you get to ask all the questions, ask, go, ask away at how people got into their fields and just an excuse to kind of like get a mentor or gain that um, professional network. Um, we also have this pay it forward model. So the program costs nothing upfront um, you literally don't pay anything until you have gotten a job making more than a livable wage. And that is when you will pay um, monthly payments back for the next climber. And paying it forward is kind of like 
No one comes in paying anything, but they make sure that they pay something so that the next person can also have that opportunity. So we offered two different career tracks. Um, the first one, which was the one that the organization was founded on is Salesforce Administrator. This is a 24 week program ideal for analytical detail oriented problem solvers. Um, general work experience is helpful, but nothing is nothing specific is required. Um, these are for people who are like into breaking into the tech field and um, really, really curious, really tech curious. And I would say like, um, bare minimum at tech savvy. Like I came in through the Salesforce admin program. Um, I'm not the most tech savvy. Like I do have my nine-year-old son that teaches me like little things all the time. But um, I knew a little bit enough to move through the program and um, become a Salesforce uh, administrator. Um, and then we also have the tech sales customer experience track um, in partnership with better.com. This is a 16 week program ideal for self starters um, who solve problems through communication and providing delightful customer experiences. Um, customer experience is preferred because this is a customer facing role. And I'm gonna go a bit more deep into those different paths. So first I'm gonna start with um, our better.com. Um, partnership. So a little background on why we chose this partnership is in our second and third cohort, um, we got a lot of climbers who got hired by better.com. And they were so amazed by the talent that we gave them that it was their idea that since they needed to fill over 100 jobs, that we kind of do this um, own its own track for better.com facing jobs. So about better.com, it's a home ownership startup founded in 2019. Um, it digitizes the mortgage lending process through proprietary technology. Home ownership is made more efficient, efficient and accessible to all. This process illuminates commissions, fees, unnecessary steps, and time-wasting appointments. Um, we are just starting this cohort this week, actually. It's kind of exciting. Um, but anyone who applies after today will be considered for our second cohort, which is scheduled to start sometime in either October or November. So why we decided to partner with Better, um, we have a goal at Climb Higher to provide opportunities for economic mobility. And this partnership helps us achieve this, achieve this by supplementing the customer interaction skills that most working adults already have. Um, the emphasis shift from having a job to growing a stable career in the financial technology sector is um, a huge goal of ours. By prioritizing learning, learn, learning, climbers are given opportunities to center themselves in fulfilling roles with the, for the, with the potential for growth. And we've already had quite a few climbers um, that have been on the job at Better who are already um, looking to go further with the company. So this is kind of like a stepping stone position as well. Our customer experience cohort. So the time commitment, like I mentioned before, is 16 weeks. There's two sessions each week on Monday and Wednesday nights. Um, the class format um, for both tracks, I want to point out, um, is, is alternates between discussion in the webinar and then role playing and project based learning in a live virtual Zoom classroom. The curriculum is um, balanced content featuring development of professional skills, client success skills, learning office tools and technology, and the introduction to mortgage lending. 
And as I mentioned, um, we have professional networking opportunities. So we do the volunteer and social capital events to build and strengthen professional networks with hundreds of tech professionals. Technical curriculum. So um, like I mentioned, you get that intro to learning mortgage lending content. You become more fluent in, tech, in terminology, concepts and practices commonly used in the mortgage lending industry. The productivity skills um, are like the productivity and office tools and technology that improve efficiency in the workplace and daily tasks like scheduling, emailing, internal communications. Um, and then you develop success, I mean, client success skills. Now for me, this really looks like just sharpening those customer service skills that a lot of people come to the program with experience in. Um, you understand the best practices about how to listen critically, summarize client concerns, de-escalate the problem and um, problem solve creatively and communicate effectively. Sorry. So what happens when the program end is um, like I mentioned, Better is trying to fill a bunch of jobs. So once you successfully complete the program, you'll be prepared to interview for a role with Better and other similar companies. So I'm going to speak to the Bay Area right now. As long as you are 50 to 75 miles from the Oakland office, um, you are guaranteed interviews with Better. And the potential roles are customer experience associate, processing expert associate, home advisor, and customer care expert. And now I'm going to talk um, about the Salesforce Administrator Program. So um, a little bit about Salesforce. It's the world's number one customer relationship management platform. Um, the Salesforce cloud computing optimizes, um, I mean, Salesforce optimizes cloud computing so organizations and companies can access their marketing, sales, commerce, service, and IT teams from anywhere on the cloud. Now, um, Salesforce is not just limited to those things I just named. Those are just like the big uses for Salesforce, but we are noticing that nonprofits use Salesforce, real estate companies use Salesforce. Um, there's so, help the health and medical field is using Salesforce. So there are so many different um, needs for this software. And this is exactly why um, we went with this as our first career track, just because there are so many Salesforce jobs out there. So we do have a partnership with Salesforce. Um, our key at Climb Hire is to provide participants opportunities for economic mobility. The emphasis shifts from having a job to enjoying a stable career. Our partnership with Salesforce helps us achieve this by allowing climbers to learn the fundamentals of Salesforce in demand and growing administrative capabilities. We do this by prioritizing learning. Climbers are given opportunities to center themselves in fulfilling roles with the potential for growth. And later on, I'll talk about um, our partnerships because Salesforce actually um, hands us over their clients and then our their clients is what we um, the partner it our partnership with their clients is how we get climbers jobs. So our Salesforce administrative cohort um, has a time commitment of 24 weeks. Um, climbers meet for six hours of class two days a week. And climbers typically spend a minimum of 10 hours outside of class on assignments. The class format is the same, practice, role play, and project-based work in a live virtual classroom. Um, the curriculum consists of Salesforce technical skills, soft skills, and those soft skills include interviewing skills, elevator pitches, resume writing, utilizing LinkedIn effectively, 
communication skills and the use of productivity tools. And we also offer those same professional networking opportunities, um, the volunteer events, and also the social capital um, cocktail hours. So for both tracks, um, the professional development um, that we that we the professional development that we use is um, enhancing people's resume skills through revision, um, editing a resume that catches the eye of hiring managers by passing through ATS is a big deal. It is something that I didn't realize until I got into this program. Why my resume? Um, why why I didn't get anything? I didn't hear anything back from employers who I submitted a resume with. And this is because companies are using ATS. Um, there is no longer a human that is looking over every application and resume. It's actually going through a system that is flagging it. So this is a big, big deal for people who are trying to, who may have all of the skills um, in the all of the skills and all of the history or background, job history or background, but are finding it hard to actually land a call back. Um, understanding how to interview effectively. So we do this reflecting on your personal experiences and work history by delivering concise, effective star stories, um, which is situation, task, action, result. Um, this again was something that I didn't realize that I may have been bombing interviews because I never really sat down and reflected on some of these scenarios that they may ask me and having a reference of my work history and the situation task action and result that they needed to hear in order to feel like um, they can be confident with me in that role. Um, we also practice together. So um, we compose stories and practice telling them out loud. The most common uh, question that you'll hear when um, in an interview is, so tell me about yourself. And that story right there sets the first impression. So we spend time um, throughout both cohorts perfecting our stories and how we carry our narrative and then building our network. So um, we expand our network by building meaningful collections with connections with uh, fellow climbers, climb higher staff and better staff. Also, we have, we build our network through the social capital opportunities that are given in the, in the program. And 80% of our first and second cohorts secure jobs that increase their income by two to three times. And this is all through being part of, this is all from the result of being part of a community where everyone is leaning on each other, building meaningful relationships, um, keeping in touch. Um, some climbers have gotten other climbers in, in roles at their jobs and it goes back to Nitsan, you know, learning that um, most jobs are acquired through social capital. So um, you kind of having those goals of getting into a certain career field or increasing your income also relies on having a network that can support those goals. So um, I want to talk about our fellows. Um, our Climb Hire fellows are our alum who serve as peer educators, mentors, and coaches. If you look at this picture on the far right on the top, Jesse is our fellow in this uh, pod. In cohort, you will be in pods. And so each pod is assigned a fellow. And Jesse from our from our first cohort is the fellow in this, I mean, is a fellow in this pod. Um, this is what it will look like once you are out of the discussion piece, the webinar portion of the program, and your fellow will be responsible for helping you understand the information, kind of going over things, mentoring you, um, through the course of the program and coaching you when you're ready to start interviewing. 
Um, our alumni also act as an uh, um, as a community of uh, support and belonging. So what this looks like is well after cohort, the alumni still keep in touch. We have monthly events. We also are on a Slack channel within the organization where we post leads, we um, start discussions. You know, uh, one of the things that helped me get through this position and just taking on my first professional role was that I had this uh, network of support of people who were also beginning their first job, or maybe this wasn't their first job, but they haven't been in a professional setting in so long. And we kind of, you know, um, relied on each other to get through certain adjustments. So paying it forward, what does it mean to pay it forward? So after climbers secure a job making within a livable wage, um, that is when they'll be required to pay it forward to the next cohort. You'll do this in installments of um, $150 a month for 36 months to cover the total participant costs. Um, I believe that this slide is reflecting for um, better.com. So the participant cost for better.com is $5,400. Um, and then the participant cost for Salesforce is $7,200. Now there are ways to reduce your total participant cost. Um, the first is serving as a fellow for the next cohort. Um, each track has their own uh, amount for the credit that you can apply to your pay it forward balance. And it's usually almost half of what the participant cost is. And then another way is to opt out of the weekly $75 stipend. During the cohort, climbers receive a $75 stipend um, to use for anything of their choice. Um, and so that's about $300 a month. You can just opt out of receiving that stipend and add it to your participant cost. So it'll make your participant cost go down. And then you can also reduce the balance by um, referring people to the program. So we do do referral um, incentives for people who uh, pass the information on and get people that they know to join the program. And I can ask any additional questions on paying it forward because I know that that is one that people have so many questions on. Um, so these are our metrics. This is you know, how successful we have been. So the average salary coming into the program is about 24K. And then the average salary in new jobs um, is 66K. That's a huge jump. 80% um, of climbers have secured jobs that increase their income by two to three times what they were making before um, within six months of the program ending. And 100% of these are done through interns and contract hires that are, oh, 100% of our climbers have um, been converted to full-time employees ahead of their schedule. So um, I know that I have a few people who are in my cohort, their contract or internship was probably set for uh, a year and then they got offered nine months down, six months down a full-time position. In this slide, um, you'll see our alum and underneath their name, you'll see their, firm, their former position. And then below that, you'll see their current position. And as you can see, there are a variety of roles that our alumni um, have landed in, um, not just a Salesforce admin. Cause I just was so sure when I got into this program, I was going to be a Salesforce admin. And then I was like, Hmm, but I don't know if I want to be an admin, but I can use the knowledge that I have from um, obtaining my cert. And so um, Andrew, he was a nursing assistant. Now he's a Salesforce consultant with Pulse Source. He's doing very well there. I might add. Um, Corinne was a family assistant. Now she's a marketing associate at BetterUp. 
Cassiano was a groundskeeper. Now he's a Salesforce admin at Bitwise. Lonnie was a dancer. And I believe she also taught dance to children. And now she's a software engineering apprentice at Blue Wolf, which is an IBM company. Um, Kevin was a food service worker at the LinkedIn building. And now he's a finance intern at Better Up. Um, Kevin and Lucy, um, they're now at TPG, which is like one of the largest global investment funds. And Lucy is an analyst there before she was a personal care assistant in the medical field. And Kevin was a legal office floater and now he's a service operations intern. Um, Chris was a customer service associate and now he's a processing expert associate at better.com. Um, Earl was a health specialist and now he is a processing expert associate at better.com. So the variety of different roles is just phenomenal. Um, Sasanda is a program assistant with a nonprofit called Co-Created. Before she was an au pair, she came to this country um, for that purpose. And then you have Megan, who was a barista. Now she's an operations manager with the Resolve Group, which is a real estate company. 80% of our climbers are now employed by these partners. Um, you'll see here, we have a lot more partnerships than that's listed, um, actually, I wanna add. And then below that, you'll see who our um, funders are. And now I'm gonna open the floor to um, questions. If you need me to, I can go back to a slide so that you can um, so that you can get more insight on something that you've seen. I, I don't see any uh, question in the chat yet. Um, but Ember, I, I do have a question for you. Um, what is your uh, what is the biggest challenge for you um, getting through the program? So a little background about me, I am a single mom. And at the time that I started Climb Higher, I was working for the US Postal Service, full-time career employee. So um, I had a nine to five, very demanding nine to five during the pandemic. <laughs> and also I had a child who, um, we all know distance learning was a lot on the children. And so I had to balance um, the time, the amount of time that was required to get through the assignments. So the assignments are broken off into two um, types. You have the soft skill assignments, and then you have the actual technical homework uh, that has to do with the academic track. And so for me, it was like Salesforce sometimes can take some hours to get through. That's why I said there's a minimum of 10 hours that you will spend outside of class on the assignments. Um, and that's more so for Salesforce than it is the soft skills assignments. So um, some weeks it was hard when you have something like a super badge to do in Trailhead, which has no instructions because once you get to the point where you're taking this, you're doing a super badge, um, you're implementing the best standard practices based off of previous modules and work that you've done. So managing your time is very important, like prioritizing your time and um, staying on top of assignments because um, it is an accelerated program after all, and you can't fall too behind, like you can't miss too many classes, you can't miss too many assignments. Got it. Um, do you mind telling us what, um, how many times um, it would take for most people um, to take the Salesforce admin exam in order to pass? One try or you know, more than okay. one? Okay, so, <laughs> so actually, um, 
I would say on the average, two tries. We do have people who pass on the first try. Um, those people are extraordinary, okay? But um, most people fail on the first attempt. You have people who work for Salesforce who will tell you like, oh, I failed two times, I failed three times. Um, I failed the first one. I was super bummed. Um, I fell by two questions. And instead of like sitting in that sadness for too long, um, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take this exam in, uh, again in another five days. And um, I passed on the second attempt with a really great score, but at the same time, um, the way that my madness <laughs> was not normal to pass. But I would say like, on the average, people will people would pass within the second or third attempt. Um, I wouldn't discourage anyone because they didn't pass on the first attempt uh, to just throw it all away. Just because it is a really hard exam. And then also multiple choice is already complicated in itself. Not everyone has the ability to um, test multiple, uh, to, to, to test well in multiple choice. So um, the format of the exam is they're giving you um, questions based off of scenarios, and then they give you multiple choice options to for the solution or the information to the scenario. And you have to choose uh, what applies. And so um, you kind of have to know the best standard practices and know the ins and outs of each topic. So it's really like the study plan, the study plan and the strategy that you have will be will, will come in handy. Thank you. Oh, I see one question in chat. Um, the question is, I already am a um, Salesforce admin certified, but uh, need help to get a job. Is it possible with Climb Higher? So yes, we are starting to take on applicants who are already certified um, with the understanding that um, they will do some of the things that they may have not done. So like, say you're already certified, but you have no super badges. Um, we will have you do those super badges and also participate in the capstone project. Um, and then you would also like do the soft skill assignments because that's the part that you need the most help with is actually landing a job. And so here at Climb Higher, um, we are becoming more flexible about helping people who are already certified because we're seeing that um, it's so easy to go and get the cert by yourself, but it's not easy landing the job without um, demonstrated experience already. Um, so can this um, participant con contact you if, uh, uh, if they want to join? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, he asked another question. How uh, does he? Uh, how uh, how can they apply then? Uh, since he already. Um, oh, okay. You, you type in <laughs> the the website address. That's great. Okay. I don't see another question in the chat. Um, yeah. If anyone has question for Ember, you can put it in the chat. Um, or uh, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, Amber, I, I know that the Salesforce um, admin program is 24 weeks. Say for example, um, I didn't pass <laughs> the exam and I, you know, I'm taking it the second time. Will I continue to um, be able to get support um, yes, from Climb Higher? that is a very great question. So, um, during the cohort, we do have base camp. And base camp is for those who may feel like they need additional support. Um, we, do the, we do the weekend sessions where people actually go over the focus on course um, exam prep and going over the questions. And then 
say cohort has ended and you failed on the exam, um, you will still have support in base camp or boot camp to help you for either part, um, either part, either the soft skills or the technical skills. So if you're bombing at passing the exam, you can go to base camp for the exam. Um, and then if you need help because you're going on interviews and you don't feel like you're doing well, um, then you can get additional help for that as well. And we also have um, climbers now take the ERS and put together a job search portfolio because this demonstrates um, where you're at um, as far as like being ready for going on an interview, being ready to be considered for uh, either interviews for, with our partnerships or your jobs, your independent job search outside of us helping you look for roles. Thank you, Ember. A question about uh, pay it forward. Um, say after I finished the program, I found a job, a good paying job, um, but um, say, I have a family to raise. I cannot afford, you know, paying $150 a month. Um, what can I do? So for the pay it forward, um, that is that is something that some of the ins and outs of that are still changing, um, especially as cost of living changes. Um, so currently right now, um, making a livable wage based off of your region. We're still hashing out family size because for example, for me, um, although the livable wage um, where I currently live is about, let's say 60K or so, or maybe around 60K. If you add in family size, um, that increases. But unfortunately, jobs aren't hiring you based off of livable wage. They're not, they're, they're not offering you salaries based off of livable wage. So um, it's kind of a case by case thing for us here at Climb Higher. Um, that's something that the CEO and the director will have to kind of like bring to the board. Um, If you, like I said, like if you make below a livable wage, we're not even asking you to pay. But once you make over 60K, um, you are expected. Now, um, if your question is if someone has like a family of four and they're the only income for that family of four, um, that will be something that um, they take up with the CEO and the board if they honestly cannot pay. But we don't, sorry, we don't generally have people um, paying unless they're in a position to pay. I'm okay. sorry if I couldn't answer your question completely. Uh, no, th this is a really a, um, a hypothetical question. <laughs> Because I know that, oh, even if we're making $60,000 um, a year in Bay Area, it's not actually livable. <laughs> it's it's no. really tough, yeah. No, I know that. Especially I, if you have family, here. Yeah. Or family, you know. And we haven't had, and see that, that's all, the reason why I also can't answer that question fully is because we actually haven't had that many single um single parent families. So we haven't ran into that dynamic where a climber has um, just this one income and they're not in the uh, position to, to give $150 a month. Um, we haven't fell into that because most people who have children are um, in two parent homes. So that's true. Yeah. They have so, a second income. Yeah. 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 Like a second income makes a total difference. So 
Um, it's one of those case by case standards. Um, we have started to work on um, an initiative for single parents, but like I said, we haven't had too many people come in who are single parents um, who couldn't uh, pay. Um, let's see, I don't see another question in the chat. Anyone, if you have a question, please put in the chat or you can raise your hand. I can unmute you and you can, oh, I see another question. Is there an age limit to apply? I see 23 to 33 years of so, age. On the um, we have expanded that age limit. Um, if you see on the website, thank you for letting me know so I can have that changed. Currently, right now, we are doing 22 to 38. Um, I, will, I would encourage you to still uh, apply. Um, and because I'm the one who approve applications anyway. So just apply. And then um, I'll reach out to you and also reach out to my management as well. Thank you, Amber. I don't see a question in the chat, but um, Ember, if a participant have question after um, uh, today's presentation, um, will you welcome them to email you directly? Yes, I'm placing that in the chat right Okay, now. thank you. We also um, offer information sessions. Um, it'll be somewhat like this uh, presentation that I gave you, but for um, a certain track, it'll be uh, more detailed information. So um, you can also go to the website and schedule an information session based off of those tracks. Um, in addition to our Salesforce and better.com, we are also launching two new tracks in um, the new year. So in the new year, um, we will then be offering Google Project Management and also a partnership with Fidelity. Thank you, Ember. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to share with us about Climb Higher and your experience as a climber. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining the program. I hope you find the presentation informative and helpful to you. Uh, we'll send out an evaluation survey together with the link to Ember's presentation um, and um, today's recording. Um, please give us your feedback so we can continue to improve. Again, thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye now. Bye.